Once upon a time, in the early 2000s, there was the original Bionicle storyline, a LEGO action figure series about robotic characters that wore masks and manipulated the elements. Kind of like Avatar The Last Airbender combined with the Power Rangers. Because the characters were mechanical, it made sense to take them apart and build their pieces back together. But what was even more significant about Bionicle is how it presented its narrative across multiple platforms of media, including comics, movies, video games, and chapter books. Even if you don't know anything about Bionicle, that's okay, because I'm going to condense and explain the narrative's lore without spoiling too much of the big plot twists. This is Lava Pasta's Guide to Bionicle Part 2, Metru Nui. 2004 and 2005 are the prequel years of Bionicle's narrative, expanding the world and fleshing out its characters during a time period that takes place before our introduction to the story in 2001. Before the Bionicle characters lived on the tropical island of Mata Nui, they lived in the industrial metropolis of Metru Nui, which is divided into six different Metru districts for six different elements. While it makes sense for the characters to work in industries that suit their elements, in my opinion, Metru Nui doesn't actually feel like a real, tangible environment and it's not quite as unique to see robots living in an urban city than it is to see robots living on a tropical island, which is the aesthetic that Bionicle was originally founded upon. Metro Nui could have worked better if it looked more like a real location, but I'm willing to put that aside for now so that I can focus on what this part of the story does best. The characters. The main protagonists of Bionicle 2001 were the six mythical Toa heroes, who protected the Matoran villagers and were guided by six Turaga elders, Vakama, Nuju, Oniwa, Matau, Nokama, and Wenua. But in 2004, it was revealed that the reason why the Turaga had so much experience is because they were all once Toa themselves. And on top of this, before they even became Toa, they were also originally Matoran citizens from Metro Nui. Thus, the reason why Matoran need to be protected isn't just because it's the right thing to do, it's because they're the future. Every single Matoran has the potential to become a Toa themselves. And that's also why I find it so disappointing that most of the female Matoran characters are limited to the elements of water. I know that I keep making a big fuss about these female characters in Bionicle, but since the element and color restrictions for Matoran carry over and become element and color restrictions for Toa characters as well, it means that we will never get to canonically see a red female Toa of Fire, or a female Toa of Stone, Ice, Earth, or Air. We could have had all these interesting characters if the story didn't have such arbitrary rules. I mean, Bionicles are made from Lego, so you do at least have the option of making your own. I just wish that the mechanics of the official story were more supportive of that creative freedom. 2004 was actually the very first year where I purchased a new Bionicle canister set, which was Vakama Metru Toa of Fire, an introverted craftsman with his head in the clouds, but with a lot more nuance than your stereotypically angry fire character. Upon Vakama's suggestion, the newly formed Toa Metru seek out the legendary Great Discs of Metru Nui in order to prove themselves to the city's population. So while the Toa Metru use their new Toa tools with dual weapon functionality to explore the metropolis and fight an evil plant for these collectathon MacGuffins, the audience could also obtain the six Great Discs 
by opening random blind boxes and hoping for the best. Every disc mold is compatible with the McDonald's toys from 2001 and the new disc launcher play feature that was included with all six 2004 Matoran toys, but surprisingly, only one of the main canister sets. Unlike the rest of his teammates, Vakama's main Toa tool is a disc launcher with flame accents that can be attached behind the character to serve as a jetpack, which is awesome, and if you swing his arms using the gearbox function, the launcher kind of swings around like a battle axe. Honestly, when I first purchased this character from KB Toys in 2004, I thought that I was getting Tahu Nuva, the previous fire character with the lava surfboard, but the box art confused me and I ended up with Vakama Metru by accident. However, in retrospect, I do not regret purchasing him at all, because Toa Vakama has an incredibly wide variety of play features. Although I missed my opportunity to purchase 85721 Tahu Nuva in retail stores, I was able to obtain Toa Likon, another Toa of Fire who wields two fire greatswords that both combine into a sky surfboard. Likon is essentially a combination of everything iconic about Toa Tahu from 2001 and 2003, which is interesting because Tahu's mentor was Vakama, while Vakama's mentor was Likon. Well, sort of, anyway. It is Toa Likon who seeks out and assembles the future Toa Metru and gives them their powers in the movie Bionicle 2 Legends of Metru Nui, which focuses on the second half of 2004's story with Toa Matau, Nokama, Oniwa, Wenua, Nuju, and Vakama as the main protagonists. After presenting the six legendary great discs to the populations of Metru Nui, the brand new Toa Metru are rejected by their great city, and find themselves branded as vigilante imposters pursued by the Vaki police force, robot drones that, yes, are actual robots in a world populated by characters who are mechanical but not actually robots. The Vaki canister sets are like a cross between the Borok swarms from 2002 and the Rakshi from 2003, including a gearbox, transformation, and disc launching play features all in the same package. 2004 also continues the tradition of multiple Titan sets, featuring a red Turaga with a giant bird and two evil bounty hunters, one of them which just so happens to be a disgraced member of Likon's original Toa team, who turned evil and was mutated into a giant green spider crab. I am not making this up, this actually happens in the story. <laughs> Speaking of spiders, after the events that take place in Legends of Metro Nui, which I don't want to spoil too much of, our protagonists return to their abandoned city to find it occupied by the spider-like Visorak Horde, who easily capture the Toa Metro and mutate them into monstrous Toa Hordika. So now, Metro Nui is basically a post-apocalyptic Gotham City covered in spider webs, and it's night all the time, and everything is green, and now Bionicle is about six werewolves fighting an army of spiders. To its credit, we do get more information on what Rahi animals are like, and there is an interesting conflict where the protagonists believe that they were never supposed to become Toa to begin with. But to be honest, Bionicle 2005 is probably my least favorite year in the franchise. The Visorak spiders are flimsy, and the Toa Hordika builds are all palette swaps that don't even have actual masks. In fact, when I first saw the Hordika in a Bimart near the end of December 2004, I literally thought that they were bootleg Bionicle figures. That's how bad they look. 
I mean, 2005 does have the special edition Toa Haga figures, new LEGO system playsets, and there are the Titan sets that introduce the Kitangu orange color and a female villain with... Rakshi breasts. But even still, I was so incredibly bored with the 2005 storyline, I spent most of the year reading all the old chapter books from 2001, playing the Bionicle video game for the Nintendo GameCube, and then during the summer, I switched over into LEGO Star Wars. It's easy to take it for granted, but Metro Nui changed our preconceived notions of the Bionicle series by introducing a life cycle that connected three different types of characters under one species. And even though 2004 takes place in a less visually interesting environment than the years before it, doing so transformed the Bionicle story into a superhero narrative, where complex characters grow and change with each stage of their evolution. The Toa Metru are way more dysfunctional than the Toa Nuva ever were. They constantly argue amongst each other and fail to live up to their own expectations, but that's what makes their team dynamic so interesting. You want them to succeed because you've seen them fail, and experiencing failure is what prepares them to do better in the future. While the early years on the island of Mata Nui explore the environment around the action figure, the Metro Nui storyline puts more importance on the character within the action figure, because that's what Bionicle sets are focused on, the characters. Whenever you buy a Bionicle figure, you're getting someone that has a personality, a complex backstory, and a history behind them. They're not just any old toys, they're not just regular Legos, they're Bionicles.